Welcome back to My Hero Academia Anime Review Episode 144. Now, like last week, I actually have a new chapter of the manga to discuss. Now, this one I'm discussing episode 122 of, of the anime, which is known as Katsugo Bakugo Rising, and the 375th chapter of the manga. Now, this episode covers uh, basically for the rest of chapter 282, which is pages 2 through 19, along with the entirety of chapters 286 to 200. Uh, it's uh, 283 to 285. Thus simply, with this episode, this volume is completely adapted. Yep, volume 9 is done. 29, excuse me. Now, what happens this episode? Well, we have a little bit here with Momo and the other heroes who are up at the villa. Where that kind of... Let's, let's, before we talk about Deku stuff, let's talk about... First, we have Ingenia and worry about Deku. We also see Froppy and Ochako here. Which there's a flashback related to this for them. I'll get to that. So they they basically wonder where Deku is. All of a sudden, there's something really crazy going on. Of course, something happened in the country, and then the worry about giant uh, giant Machia basically coming just rampaging into the area. And of course, Momo and everybody's wondering if they failed. Though there's a flashback of show basically the majestic and a few other heroes do praise him for what they did. Though all those heroes knocked out, and that's the see let's see them. Though a lot of this, now we do see a flashback. Uh, before I get to the present, I want to talk about this flashback first. We have, I think it's supposed to be Tape, Ochaku, and Froppy, where, where they're basically training. Well, actually, it's more like Ochaku training Deku uh, how to float in the air because they theorize that the next quirk they're going to lock is basically All Might's mentor's uh, quirk, which was Float. Which of course that proved to be true. Yes, that. So basically, just keep the keep, keep basically train the body up in the air and also train the attacks too. We also have a conversation between Bakudo and All Might. We're talking about basically they talk about the fourth user of the all of the all for one cork, the one for our cork, and they really go into detail about it. And it's basically the same as the manga. Which I do we appreciate that? Now you're probably thinking, did the anime cut something really important? Related to the fourth cork user from the manga, the answer is no. That was not cut here at all. Nope, it was not cut. So high praise for Bones to keep that in. Meanwhile, though, present day, we mostly just see just Deku just basically beating the living crap. We do see that. Oh, by the way, the the whole thing we pick, in the present day. First thing we see in present day in the battery is in the, in the last episode we see. So I saw Doroki fire a cork eraser, like eraser the cork destroyer at a razor head, which eraser proceeds to chop up his own freaking leg with a knife. Yes, seriously. By the way, they do mention a flashback. They do mention what happened in the final episode of the previous season of the show, where they had a razor head and President Michael visit um, Warp Gate in prison. I I kind of forget the guy's name, but I know his power is Warp Gate. By the way, he actually does come back. I'll get to more of that. So. He does all like, of course, he's still racing the quirk because his, his original quirk is not kicking in yet. So basically, his body is like virtually falling apart. So Deku proceeds to, at that point, just beat the living crap out of him. To point out both his arms are completely bruised, his, his gloves that the Himiko, not Himiko, it was uh, that the other girl, um, the one Lexus Simpson voices in the anime. Um, i trying to remember her name. It's. Um, it's not Himiko. What is her name here? Okay. Hatsumi. Yeah, Hatsumi is her name. Yeah, the gloves that she made for him. I think that was back in season four, if not mistaken. Three, at least, it was, I think it was season. It was really a training thing that Deku and Alma were going through, and she made these gloves. And they're basically destroyed here. That those gloves she worked so hard to make, and they're basically destroyed. Though, by the way, in case you're curious, though, uh, she has not returned for quite a while. Not until. Uh, some more, more recent stuff. That's when she finally returns to the series. So, yeah. 
and of course De and of course you have Bakuto realizing though that Deku is basically almost nearly out of strength and he does not want him to die so he basically forms a plan with Endeavor and Shudo to basically have Endeavor basically do the, the final blow to Sodoroki and Endeavor catches on pretty quickly what Bakuto's plan is. Bakuto will fly up thanks to Shudo his, his little boom blast and of course Shudo keep him cool enough basically we get the basically fire full fledged fire blast on on him and then it does work it probably nearly burned the grips and then we see his hand pop up this little war this little black space and it's all for one yes let me take control of your body they have this weird red stick coming out of him with stabs endeavor it looks like it's gonna stab Deku, and then it ends up stopping Bakudo, and that's the episode ends. I gotta admit, this was a damn good episode. I loved it. Next up, the uh, manga. Excuse me. All right, so this is chapter two hundred three hundred seventy-five. Chaotic confusion. Starting with Himiko, where she's going after Froppy and Ochaku. And of course, you have her taking on her. While in this scene here, we also have, besides Froppy here, apparently uh, we have a couple of heroes that don't recognize them, so take some on. Himiko Toga, get back here. Oh, yeah, Orca's here too. And he takes, takes on other Nemus here. And Toga's like, oh, she, she basically says like a bunch of stuff like Semis. And then she takes her mess. They do a bad bend spinner. She like sticks her tongue out with her canine fangs. Ha, huh, there she is. I was a little head, Tatsu. That was a decoy. Yep, and then we see a tick, a decoy froppy. Yep, and then we see a, yeah, it was real last shot. Apparently twice came back. Like, he may... You must save Todoroki and his allies, Himiko Toga. What do you want to do? To slaughter the heroes, sturdy with hawks. Send me out there, Kogori. That's the name, Kogori. Yeah, twice is back. It's like, get back here. We still haven't had a chat about romance. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Ochaku. Price like, huh? I wish I could have. Yeah, apparently Ochaku wants to talk to Himiko up toga about freaking romance that would be something meanwhile though the ganga mountain i wish i could have and with more tw and apparently twice more infinite doubles hawks here too so really sandman's parade is basically like this big tidal wave and then we see the mushroom girl and then apparently we see in the chapter we have ochaku say ain't losing side of you again I say not again and by the way a froppy is attached to her arm I'm like, okay. So, I call that an interesting chapter. Yes. Toga. Uh, Himiko Toga and Ochaku talking about romance. That should be quite something. Especially since Ochaku was in love with Deku. <laughs> and it's implied Deku might be having the same feelings for her. For for her. Yep. I love, I love this chapter. Like, this is probably about the best chapter I've seen in quite some time. I love it. I thought it was really good here. Good character stuff here. I gotta say, this probably is the first chapter in a while that features no appearance by Deku. Nope. I think you could say he's gonna be, he was probably mentioned this chapter, but no physical appearance by him. And the only character you've seen this whole chapter were just Ochaku, Froppy, and Himiko Toga along with Twice. That's it. Four main characters in this whole chapter. And there's a couple of heroes, I didn't, I didn't really remember who these two were, but this was a damn good chapter. I love it. Okay, so that's it with you. Next up is going to be Uzuki-chan wants to hang out. Okay, next video. Bye.